welcome back to the DoD Risk Management Framework Series. I'm Mike Redman here guiding you through ensuring you have the information that you need to successfully implement the DoD Risk Management Framework. We've made it to step number four, assess. In this section, we will ensure that you know how to use one or more of the three methods of assessment to assess your information system, how to prepare or support the preparation of the security assessment documentation, any issues or findings and recommendations that may come out of the assessment activity. If you're studying for the ISC squared cap examination, this is where you would need to understand the control assessment and monitoring phases and the triggers in the new new cap process. Within the assess step, step four, we have four base tasks. Assessment preparation, security control assessment itself, the security assessment report, and any remedial actions. So this is another core difference between DICAP and RMF. Uh, there's an extra step here. In the assessment of the security controls, you are required to test, examine, and interview. This is an expansion on the DICAP methodology where there was only examine and interview. So why go through this process? It's all about finding the gap. By doing the three-step process, test, interview, examine, the hope is to find the gap. Where should it be? Where do you think it is? And where is it? When constructing the security assessment plan itself, uh, there are six base operations. Uh, one, develop the security assessment policy. Uh, two, prioritize and schedule the assessment. Uh, three, select and customize testing techniques. Uh, four, determine logistics and assessment. And five, develop the assessment plan. And six, address any legal considerations. You can find a more expansive explanation in the NIST special publication 800-115. So the guide for assessors would be the 853A. A for assessment. It gives control assessors specific guidance on how to perform each risk assessment. The assessment itself must be consistent and comparable, repeatable and cost effective to better understand the full risk to the information system. The hope is by making it, for instance, comparable and repeatable that a more complete, more reliable and trustworthy outcome or risk assessment is being performed. Walking through base assessment preparation, this is a task owned by the security controls assessor themselves. So what makes a security control assessor? Uh, first, what you're looking for is experience. Does the assessor have the required skills and technical expertise for that particular information system and a wealth of the knowledge that is required to be able to assess the particular hardware, software, and firmware that the information system contains? You want to find independence, no vested outcome in the success or failure of any one assessment. Now, the assessor can be an individual, or most often it's going to be a group of individuals that are free from perceived or actual conflicts of interest. They should not be directly involved in any aspect of that information system. Assessing the security controls themselves, again, is a task owned by the security control assessor or the SCA. Each assessment has clear objectives. Uh, for instance, the security control assessment objectives should be were the controls implemented correctly, identifying that each control is operating as intended. And are they producing the desired result with reference to the security objective itself? Again, this is where tailoring can be of utmost importance. Uh, yes, you have the right control in place, but do you have the proper control in place? Did you put a door in place to separate security zones, but did you select the correct door for the separation of those zones? So the assessment methodology will include the appropriate evaluation methods from this list, uh, document review, uh, interview, observation and test. For it to be a valid assessment, these are the required components for that assessment. Again, document, interview, observe, and test. 
NIST lays out these steps and core functionality. Uh, Examine is the observation and review portion. Uh, interview, well, it's somewhat self-explanatory, I think. Uh, test, observe the process owner perform the specific control and make sure that you are getting the desired or expected outcome. Uh, the attributes that you can be looking for, it can range in depth from a basic assessment all the way to a full and comprehensive assessment. Uh, coverage, a basic assessment or a comprehensive coverage. Uh, determining by assurance requirements or segmenting, if you will, um, defined by the organization. Uh, for instance, not all controls are gonna be applicable to every organization in every situation. The assessor is working through some very specific tasks to ensure that the proper policies are in place, ensure that all previous RMF steps were completed and completed correctly, to ensure that all common controls are in place and implemented, to collect and evaluate system artifacts. The assessment testing itself can include, for instance, vulnerability scanning or log review, physical or logical penetration testing, uh, configuration review checklists. It's really up to the assessor what they deem necessary based on conversation with the system owner to properly assess that information system in a given environment or against specific requirements. That brings us to a section that is wholly unique to the Department of Defense, the CCIs. CCIs are Control Correlation Identifier. They are singular, actionable statements pulled out of the DISA STIGs. The CCI is designed to bridge the gap between the high-level policy and the low-level implementation. All CCIs are to be developed to provide traceability. It allows organizations to readily demonstrate compliance with multiple information assurance compliance frameworks. So the first criteria is that a CCI must be discrete. It must represent a single requirement. For example, if the STIG control indicates the password policy has to include multiple requirements addressing password minimum and maximum maximum and reuse and lifetime, there should be or will be five individual CCIs that originate from that single control. One CCI for the minimum password length, one CCI for the maximum password length, one for password reuse, one for password minimum lifetime, and one to establish the administrative procedure for lost or compromised passwords. The next criteria is that each CCI must be actionable and measurable. The CCI is there to represent an action that can be taken on the system or against the information that can be acquired by reviewing or testing or querying the organizational policy. Uh, also, it's there to describe what must be able to be determined by a measurable event. For instance, using the same example with the password, the minimum password password length can be a value that can be measured against the organizational policy or the system configuration itself. Here is an overall mapping of how the STIGs overlay and correlate with the 853 base controls. You see that you have the CCI sitting right in between. So you have the high level 853, the mid level where all your policies and standards and the CNSS 1253 and then the control identifiers themselves correlating to an individual system or technology stick. Some of the tools and methods available to assessors, again, are log reviews, file integrity checkers, uh, penetration testing, both logical and physical, uh, overall vulnerability scanning, perhaps social engineering or wireless scanning, as well as network scanning and discovery and prior assessment reports. It is, however, important to note here that we want each assessment to be independent. That also means independent of bias. Uh, so uh, access to prior assessment reports should really be an assessor's last option when all others have failed to validate a specific control. 
Finally, we get to the security assessment report. This is where the issues and findings are documented and recommendations for correcting weaknesses and any inefficiencies found. This is also where we identify any remedial actions, uh, such as to review in the prioritization of findings themselves, uh, the remedial actions, reassessment of risk, and so forth. Throughout these steps, you will have the system owner, the common control provider, and the assessor themselves. In our next section, we will tackle step five, the authorization.